Welcome into the InfoWars Nightly News. It's October 7th, 2016. I'm your host, Owen Schroyer, and here's what's on the news tonight. Tonight. While the presidential candidates and the mainstream media prepare for the next town hall style debate, Russia prepares for war with the United States. Meanwhile, the Obama administration and the Clinton campaign continue to blame Russia for hacking U.S. political sites. And Hillary says, as president, she will strike back. As president, I will make it clear that the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. Then, Donald Trump feels like he will have the advantage during the next debate because many questions will come from a live audience. But this might be the perfect opportunity for the establishment to plant their operatives in the crowd and ambush Trump. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Welcome into the InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks to everybody for joining us tonight. I'm your host, Owen Schroyer. We've got NFL ratings. We've got World War III. We've got more corruption out of Obama and Clinton. We've got tons on the upcoming pres presidential debate on Sunday, which we will have live coverage of. But before I get into any of that, you know, yesterday I was on the Nightly News with Leanne McAdoo, and we were talking about the Matrix and how there's tech billionaires that are trying to fund getting humans out of the matrix. They think we're in some sort of a computer programming uh, simulation, essentially, and that our reality is not actually real, and we are truly actually living in a matrix they want to break us free of. You know, folks, the truth of the matter is we are in a matrix, but it's not a computer simulation. We are in a matrix of our mind. We are trapped in a matrix in the sense that we have all been indoctrinated into the same thing, the same pop culture trends, the same trends in the media, the same things we study every day in the government controlled schools. These are the matrices of our lives. These are the matrices we have to break free from. The food incorporated, the big farm incorporated. These are the matrices that we have to break out of folks. So. Maybe there's a computer simulation that we're all in. Maybe that's the true matrix. Maybe we can somehow find a way to break out of this thing that is our fake reality that some of these tech billionaires believe we're living in. But in the reality that we are in, there are true matrices. There is really a war on for your mind. And if you want to break out of that matrix, quit being a sheep. Quit going along with the herd. Quit being part of the hearsay mafia. Quit being part of the drive-by media audience. Engage yourself in the information war. Do a little research for yourself. Look into how you can be healthier as a human being. Quit going to the mainstream media to figure out what is going on in the world. This is how we break free of the matrix. Getting out into earth, finding pleasure in life and experiences and love and quit lusting for more money or power. That is how we truly break break free from the matrix and we don't need a billionaire to help us do that. So that's how I feel about the matrix. I'm not sure whether I'm in a matrix or not. I believe I have free will and my free will is what has led to me breaking free of the matrix, which is the control of your mind. There is a lot of brainwashing going on out there. We see it every day. I used to be one of them. But I have broken free of the matrix, and I didn't need Elon Musk to fund that awakening process. For example, when Empire tells you to vote for Hillary Clinton, or all of these celebrities tell you to vote for Hillary Clinton, break free of that matrix. That, that is an example of the matrix trying to control your mind. Now, folks, the biggest danger we face at the end of this matrix is World War III. We have seen our government and the mainstream news demonizing Russia. They want to build this up. Here's a special report from Alex Jones. I cannot help asking those who have caused this situation. Do you realize now what you've done? I want to be clear to those who try to oppose the United States. I want to be clear to those who wish to do us harm. We'll stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. In the last year, I have issued more than 10 
emergency alerts dealing with the deteriorating situation, not just in the Middle East with Syria, but also with Ukraine bordering Russia. I've been following the statements coming out of the Kremlin and out of the Russian Defense Ministry. I've been following the statements out of the Pentagon and out of our Congress. I have been following the statements of top geopolitical analysts, journalists, and others. Vladimir Putin has press conferences and begs the Western media to inform the public about the fact that countries are being destabilized around Russia and weapons and troops are being moved in by NATO against Russia's border. It's only you that they tell these fables and you buy it and spread it to the citizens of your countries. Your people do not feel a sense of the impending danger. This is what worries me. How do you not understand that the world is being pulled in an irreversible direction? That is the problem. But they pretend like nothing's going on. Uh, I don't even know how to get through to you people anymore. And then George Soros goes on TV and brags that he was involved with the $5 billion that the State Department admits they sent to overthrow an elected government of Ukraine. First on Ukraine, one of the things that many people recognized about you was that you, during the revolutions of 1989, funded a lot of dissident activity, civil society groups in Eastern Europe, in Poland, the Czech Republic. Are you doing similar things in Ukraine? Well, I set up a foundation in Ukraine before Ukraine became independent of uh, Russia. Um, and the foundation has been uh, functioning ever since. And it played a, an important part in events now. Russia is not offensively threatening our country. But our elites are preparing for a war with Russia. And then they want to go after their political opposition here in the United States, claiming we're Russian agents. And now, one of the most important developments in the five-year tragic saga of the Western-backed Al-Qaeda-started civil war in Syria took place today. Russia came out in the Moscow Times. It was in Yahoo News, Associated Press, Daily Caller, you name it, stating any aircraft entering Syrian airspace that's not authorized by the Syrian government and the Russians who were invited in will be shot down. What does that signify in plain English? The Russians are saying there is a no-fly zone over Syria. You enter this country, we're going to take you out. Then the Russian military, through their embassy in the U.S., put out a tweet with an image of the famously deceptive White House press secretary with missiles aiming at him saying, look, we're not going to allow your country to continue to back terrorists in Syria, which is what they've been doing. The bravada, the naked, insane, wild-eyed chutzpah of the elites running our country is evident in the fact that just a week ago, announcements were made by the State Department that terrorists would attack Russia. Jihadis, the same one the West runs, if Russia didn't back off in Syria. Extremist groups will continue to exploit uh, the, the vacuums that are there in Syria to expand their operations, um, which will include, no, no question, uh, attacks against uh, Russian interests, perhaps even Russian cities. The power structure hopes that the American people and the people of the West are not up to speed on geopolitical developments. They're counting on that. But let me break down the facts. And these are undisputed. Syria is a proxy war between Russia and the globalists that have hijacked the West. The West is using Al-Qaeda Sunni Wahhabist mercenaries, that's Islamic State, to invade the multi-religious tolerant nation of Syria to destabilize it and overthrow it as a gateway into Turkey and the rest of Europe for Islamic colonization. Four years ago, our military basically engaged in a soft coup, which Cy Hirsch reported on four years after we broke it, confirming it, but we have the sources, and said, we're not going to back al-Qaeda in the overthrow of this country. This is pure evil. So let's look who Obama has installed to complete Hillary's strategy in the Middle East. General Joseph Dumford, two weeks ago, saying, I'm ready to launch a no-fly zone over Syria 
But if we do that, we'll have to shoot down Russian aircraft, and that will start a war with Russia and Syria. Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. Here's what the Army Chief of Staff, General Mark Milley, had to say just two days ago. I want to be clear to those who try to oppose the United States. I want to be clear to those who wish to do us harm. I want to be clear to those around the world who want to destroy our way of life and that of our allies and friends. The United States military, despite all our challenges, despite our op-tempo, despite everything we've been doing, will stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. We'll beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. He says, get ready for a war as big as World War II. What comes after two? Three. So in summation, it's very important, not just for our viewers and listeners to listen and listen very, very clearly and research what we've laid out here today, these facts that are irrefutable. It's important for our political class, who is completely disconnected from reality, to listen to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs and others that are explaining to you that this is World War III you're asking for. I've never seen the Chief of Staff of the Army look this grave. They're being given a position of World War III, and I understand why they're trying to put a strong face on America, but there's no winning a war where the Russians can destroy the planet conservatively 100 times, and we can destroy it 300 times. There's no winner. The only way to win this game is not to play. And there's one final point I want to get to. The Russians have supersonic missiles, their S-300s, and even more advanced, that are Mach 3 to Mach 6, and that nothing can shoot down. And they're aimed at our aircraft carriers. And I saw Congress two weeks ago, and the chairman was there. They're saying, well, we're just going to shoot down their planes with missiles, so it won't matter. None of our people will be lost. And the general went, yeah, but then the Russians are going to respond, you know, in the full hour-long clip. And Congress kept saying, yeah, but we're just going to hit them with missiles. Well, Russia asked for it. No, they didn't. They're there kicking al-Qaeda and ISIS out. They're there doing what we should be doing. Our elite are so corrupt, they make Russia look good. And that's shameful. America needs to wake up out of its coma before you finally wake up because you live outside a major city and weren't killed immediately by the thousand megaton hydrogen bomb that goes off at a thousand feet airburst above your house. Everyone in history thinks they're immune from wars till it happens. Non-military combatants that weren't even in the crosshairs in the 20th century number at over 260 plus million from democide, death by government. The numbers killed in military actions are even higher. I want this planet to continue on. I am an agent of humanity. I'm an agent of real peace. I believe in sovereignty. I believe in standing up for ourselves. But it's not the Russians opening up our borders and bringing in the jihadis. It's the New World Order. It's the globalists. It's Merkel and Obama and Hillary. Russia is just trying to stabilize its own country. The globalists see it as weak and are trying to drive it into collapse. And bringing us to the very verge of World War III because a bunch of old neocons and people get a hard on getting off on the ultimate sickness, which is war. It's time to reel these people in. It's time to deal with the biggest clear and present danger humanity has ever faced. I'm Alex Jones signing off with this emergency of emergency reports. It's time for sanity to prevail. Now, please spread this video link to everyone you know and the articles on Infowars.com that detail it and break it all down. Ah, you stuck around, so now you get the little gallows humor Easter egg of the day. There has been a huge meme going the last few days because I tweeted out a photo of myself horseback riding with my children with my shirt off. And I even made the joke myself, oh, I'm a Russian agent, I'm against World War III, ha, ha, ha. And there's been a lot of photoshopping with myself and Donald Trump, uh, you know, riding around together with uh, Putin. Well, th those photos are fake. Just like this one I'm about to show you from, what, two, three years ago, where I made the joke that I was out horseback riding 
at the end of the first Planet of the Apes with Charlton Heston. So let's hope that this real world crisis we're facing doesn't end like it did in the Charlton Heston classic film, because sometimes life does imitate art. Zach, this is Crystal Palace. Sink Norad has declared DEFCON 3. Scramble all alert aircraft. I repeat, scramble all alert aircraft. The Whopper spends all its time thinking about World War III. Target selection complete. Time on target sequence complete. 22 Typhoon class submarines departing Petropavlovsk. Turning southbound at North Cap, bearing 095 degrees. Radar reports two unknown tracks are penetrating the Alaskan air defense zone. From the front lines of the information war. Flush the bombers, get the subs in launch mode. We are at DEFCON 1. Are you prepared to destroy the enemy? You bet. Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic. We'll keep control, but we'll keep it here at the top where it belongs. Three, two, one. Impact. Shall we play a game? How about global thermal nuclear war? Live. From the Infowars.com studios, it's Alex Jones. All units confirm weapons targeted and ready, awaiting launch codes. We are in a launch mode. Do you really believe that the enemy would attack without provocation? If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. We're in. Russians are still denying everything, sir. We have a Soviet submarine launch detection. I wish I didn't know about any of this. I wish I was like everybody else. Things then. The only winning mood is not today. Joe Banks here with Infowars.com. Now, this coming Sunday, we have the second presidential debate about to kick off. It's going to be epic. Round two, Trump versus Hillary in St. Louis. Now the coverage is gonna start from four to six, as you can see right here. It'll be live here in the uh, studio. Alex Jones will be doing his normal Sunday broadcast, and then that will roll over to the rest of the crew that will continue to do the live debate coverage as it goes in. Now we know it starts at 9 p.m. Eastern time. It'll be 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for us here in Austin, and we're gonna be following that throughout the entire debate and until afterwards we'll take calls, talk to people, ask them what they think about the debate, so forth and so on, like we normally do. Now, it's going to take place this weekend in St. Louis at Washington University. We're actually going to have reporters Owen Schroyer and Josh Owens on scene there, talking to people outside of that area and uh, getting their opinions on what they think is going to happen beforehand and then after the debate is over. Now, let's talk about how the format's going to be. This time, it's going to be a town hall format, according to the Commission of Presidential Debates. Uh, half the questions will be posed by the audience, and the other half will be posed by the moderators. Now, the moderators for this debate will be Martha Raddatz and Anderson Cooper. Now, Trump has come out today hitting Clinton very hard because her last public appearance was actually at a private fundraiser this past Tuesday. And she is now taking the rest of the week off up until Sunday for the debate for what she says is prep time. Donald Trump has come out and said no, she is taking naps and resting because she is weak and unable to perform. Trump says she wants to build up energy for Sunday night. And you know what? That's fine, but the narrative is so foolish. I'm here for one reason. I love the people of New Hampshire. So we keep seeing this time and time again. Trump is day in and day out going from state to state, meeting with the people. You know, when Louisiana had their floods, where was he at? He was down there helping out. So we've seen this from Trump time and time again, hardly ever sleeping, constantly on the road, out there with the voters, talking to the people, trying to get out his message. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is always taking naps and she's always looking very sick and ill. Now let's talk about the moderators. We have Martha Raddatz. She is someone who actually had Barack Obama at her wedding a while back. She is also someone who is very heavy on bringing up the birtherism. So we know that's something that could be a huge distraction for the debate come Sunday if she brings that up. Now we can go in time and time again and show you so many ways that Hillary Clinton is the one that's actually responsible for bringing up the birtherism thing. 
thing, but I'm sure she'll try to put it on Trump. Now we have to look at Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper was also part of the Clinton Global Initiative, much like Matt Lauer, who hosted the first town hall between Hillary and Trump. And we all know how that turned out. He got hammered in the media, and then so did Lester Holt after that. Both Martha Raddatz and Anderson Cooper are bickering back and forth, apparently, in many articles talking about how they want to be able to get certain questions in during this debate. So it'll be interesting to see how this unfolds. We have the CIA mockingbird Anderson Cooper and the birtherism Martha the Raddatz going after Donald Trump. Will it be fair or will it be completely biased like we've seen time and time again? Well, stay tuned for that live coverage that'll be coming up this Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll be breaking everything down live as it happens. This has been Joe Biggs with Infowars.com. As investigative news journalists, every time there's a new election cycle, we go and sign up to get the major candidates' internal emails they're sending out to constituents. And the one we just got yesterday from Hillary Clinton is incredible. She goes on to say that she's really worried about Donald Trump and that he has a dangerous advantage in battleground states and is outspending her and basically surging ahead of her and that she can't get any people on the ground to come out and support her. Now, she says, I'm not bedwetting, but basically admits that they are in a major crisis. This is huge. Now, Hillary is not telling InfoWars something we didn't already know. We're informed, we're involved. But if you watch Hillary on national television or her surrogates, she's way ahead of Trump. Trump's falling apart. I mean, Tim Kaine was out yesterday saying that uh, Pence is getting ready to basically just give up. All this incredibly made-up crap. But when we get their internal emails, they are panicking because in battleground state after battleground state, in most internal polls, Donald Trump is five, six, seven, eight, even ten points ahead of Hillary. The truth is Hillary wants to create the perception that she won so Homeland Security that's now federalizing elections can steal it from her. The truth is Hillary doesn't have anybody basically coming to her crowds, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100, when Trump on average has 20,000. The truth is most of the people that would have voted for her voted for Sanders during the primary, and they know that she stole it. Even the Stanford Research Institute has certified that fact. You know they're desperate when the vice president has to say, listen, I know you're not crazy about Hillary, but come on. If we lose Pennsylvania, Trump's going to get in. But I know some of you and some of the people you're trying to convince aren't crazy about Hillary. I know that, okay? I think she's gotten an unfair deal, but the truth of the matter is there's a lot of people. Now, I'm going to get to my final point and my most important point in a moment. But first, I'd like to invite everyone watching or listening right now to join us for at least six hours of live coverage of the second historic debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump this Sunday from 4 to 10 p.m. Infowars.com forward slash shows where you find all the free audio and video feeds. You can also download the free Infowars live app that will have the video feed and more at Infowars.com forward slash app. But whatever you do, tell your neighbors, your friends, your family, and others to tune into our coverage, and we might be able to wake some people up and get them off that fence. And finally, several days ago, InfoWars broke nationally. The amazing investigative reporting research of Spanglevision on YouTube, where a known child actor was used to ask Hillary Clinton questions in a staged town hall meeting moderated by a famous actress as well. Well, now another child actress who's been in other Hillary Clinton TV ads, we've now discovered through Spangle Vision's research, popped up at the end. And our research is pointing towards a very saddening fact. Most of the crowd were actors, actresses, or were at least hired extras because Hillary Clinton can't even get a crowd of 200 people. But we are to believe that she's going to trounce Trump in the election. Do we believe the public Hillary on CNN and MSNBC saying that she's way ahead and can't lose? Or do we believe the internal Hillary in her own emails panicking to the party that they're in a crisis mode? Look, Trump's not perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody is. But 
With Trump, he's real. There's no teleprompter. He's out there telling you what he thinks. With Hillary, it's totally synthetic and fake. And the new independent true media filling the gap of the dying dinosaur media will be shining a spotlight on this this Sunday, kicking off at 4 o'clock Central, 5 o'clock Eastern, with four hours of pre-coverage. Then we'll carry the debate live and analysis after. Infowars.com forward slash show. Or get the free app, Infowars.com forward slash app. It's free on Droid. It's free on Apple. The links are there, Infowars.com forward slash app. The right-wing smear machine has gotten Alex Jonesified this election cycle. It's a guy named Alex Jones. Alex Jones. From Infowars. Infowars. Yeah. Alex Jones. Alex Jones. One of those guys who believes that Bigfoot was responsible for 9-11. I heard that on Alex Jones, so it's he true. Claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. The conspiracy du jour, Hillary Clinton is harboring a secret medical condition. You just had to keep digging, didn't you, Alex? <laughs> And this really just is so disgusting. The juice of these pickles is on you, Alex Jones. It goes right from Alex Jones and it shows up in Donald Trump's mouth. Hillary Clinton created ISIS with Obama. The very fringe of the conspiracy movement, like Alex Jones, are being kind of incorporated uh, into the campaign. If Trump gets elected, he's going to be Secretary of Defense. I think that Alex Jones is a lunatic. Move, bitch! Get, Get out, out the way! way. Bill Clinton is a rapist. Infowars.com. Bill Clinton is a rapist. <laughs> Bill Clinton is a rapist. Infowars.com. Infowars.com. Bill Clinton's a rapist. The New World Order sends its regards. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. It's Alex Jones. Now, another shirt that was designed and, and, and licensed from Roger Stone is the Bill Clinton rape shirt. Looks like the, you know, communist style Obama hope shirt that says rape, wear it, get aggressive, start the conversations, get on TV with it. In fact, I'm going to say this right now. Anyone that gets on national TV with the shirt clearly for more than five seconds gets a thousand dollars. That means, you know, behind cameras, you name it. Anyone that gets it on air on national TV and gets the words out, Bill Clinton is a rapist. Are things along that line with a bullhorn? I could go to this right now. $5,000 until a budget of 100,000 has been spent. Adoptable dogs. Well, Every year, the Best Friends Animal Society helps cats and dogs who are stuck in animal Bill shelters find homes. Bill Clinton is a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> We've got but I think one of the kind of the things that we really need to be looking at in this debate is that Bill Clinton is a rapist. Infowars.com. Infowars.com. Bill Clinton's a rapist. Bill okay. Clinton is a rapist. All right. Bill Clinton. And I got this Hillary for Prison t-shirt. And I just want everyone to know about this like big presidential campaign that uh, Bill Clinton is a rapist. Infowars.com. Okay. Thank you very much, Terrence. Doesn't age. No, he doesn't. No. He looks no. great. We're all gonna rickroll. <laughs> exactly. A <laughs> lot to get to in the We've had a hundred thousand dollar contest before. My budget's a hundred thousand. That means if you know a bunch of people do this, I'll pay up to a hundred thousand and stop it. That's one thousand dollars if you just get the shirt on national TV. Visually rape. Okay? It is it is five thousand dollars if you get the audio legally and lawfully. They gotta be outdoors, other little events, you gotta have a bullhorn, you gotta have the shirt on or have somebody with it, or maybe a big sign with it on it, and two of you hold it up, and then somebody else bullhorns. Bill Clinton is a rapist, not a philanderer. Hillary covers up the rape. Look, I'm not going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese style net censorship was coming to the web because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the Internet open and free is you get involved more than ever.
Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. InfoWars Live, available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You gonna sit down and play games and be a trendy? Or are you gonna be part of history? Don't sit by and let the internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for InfoWars.com. I'm joined with by the lovely Leanne McAdoo in studio. We're going to be highlighting all the things that we've covered this week that we think that we need to reiterate again. Leanne, let's just jump right in. We've got an article that uh, we put up a couple of days ago regarding James Comey and Cheryl Mills giving her immunity in exchange for handing over the information, if you will, which she still hasn't done, by the way. We're going to get into this. I know you have some information regarding this. Of course, we're talking about Clinton's right hand, her personal attorney, the woman that she sent to Haiti 30 times in four years because she just cares about the Haitians so much. It turns out she's got a little part to play in this email scandal. Comey wants to know what she has, and she's not going to jail regardless of her involvement. Right, and so she's granted immunity um, as long as they allowed, if I allow you to go into my computer and see what I'm working with, I need to be granted immunity, which means she obviously knows there's going to be something there that is going to potentially make her look bad. Um, so not only was she granted immunity, but they also agreed to destroy the laptops. So this is still an ongoing case. We still haven't retrieved all of those emails, but they're gonna destroy the evidence. Mm -hmm. What is going on here? This is so corrupt. This doesn't make any sense. And not only that, but Cheryl Mills was a witness to this alleged crime, and she was allowed to represent Hillary Clinton as her counsel but she's involved directly in the scandal. So just, I mean, this is just so corrupt and it just goes to the root and the heart of how hard they're working to prop Hillary Clinton up to be the next president. Comey doesn't have an interest in protecting the American people. Clearly he has an interest in protecting Hillary Clinton and her staff. We're talking about a woman that uh, may or may not be criminally complicit in what happened regarding Hillary Clinton and these emails. And the least she can do, you know, it's like telling a bank robber, if you hand over the bag that your fingerprints are on and let us look at the contents, you're not gonna be charged for the crime. That's essentially what he's doing for her. And we're talking about a woman that has inside information and possibly Possibly was even complicit in this crime along with Clinton. And uh, not only that, Leanne, but articles are coming out regarding Comey that his staff, any agent working on this case, they have to sign non disclosures. They're in danger of losing their own pensions if they talk about this publicly or privately in any way. It's almost like they're the ones that are, you know, they're not the criminals, but they're the ones that really are are looked at and censored uh, for just dealing with Clinton and the FBI. Right. Well, they all know that they have to CYA, as they say, <laughs> because they are dealing with someone who right out of the gate was going knew she was going to be doing something that needed to be um, without the watchful eyes of the government or accountability by the American public. And of course, the reason why a lot of uh, Republicans are really upset about this is because what this does with the destruction of these laptops, mm -hmm. it means that uh, they won't be able to prove that they were involved in any obstruction of justice. So uh, just like we saw in this, the Reddit users actually discovered the fact that um, one of her IT guys had actually gone to Reddit. Hey, how can I change these emails around? People are asking me this very high level VIP. So these came out after they had already concluded their investigation. And so now with them destroying the laptops, how are they supposed to go in and prove that there was um, an effort on their part to obstruct justice? So, I mean, just all across the board. I mean, this is why it kind of goes to this other story um, where Obama had to hire an army of PR staffers this cost the taxpayers $500 million per year, okay? But these are hundreds <laughs> of additional uh, PR people to sell his administration's policies because this is how corrupt, this is how wrong, they have to spend $500 million extra of our taxpayer dollars per year to try to convince us that we're getting a good deal. Right, so this, when I read this story originally, it reminds me of the State Department paying 650,000 for Facebook likes because <laughs> nobody would like them otherwise. They have to actually pay for the likes. We're talking about somebody who clearly cares about his own image and legacy more than he does the American people and he doesn't care one bit about spending hundreds of millions of taxpayer money on his own image, on his own legacy, pushing his own ridiculous policies down your throat, making sure that there's enough PR around them to actually push them down your throat because he can't actually do it legitimately. So we have to hire an army, a PR army. And I wouldn't be shocked, you know, this article that's up on our website 
It doesn't mention the trolling aspect that some PR uh, staffers actually do. So it also works in reverse. If there's negative information, the troll army also goes out and tackles the negative information. Uh, so it looks like, you know, we know where his priorities are at least. That's good. Not that we didn't before. But legacy and image and uh, ridiculous policies are what he cares about. Right. Not and of enough. course, the, you know, this was before there was the PR army that helped him win the Nobel Peace Prize. When he was only <laughs> nine months into office, they were calling him the peace time president. Meanwhile, he's got more wars going uh, than anyone really before him. That's all right. at once. So not, not only to give that back, his PR team did a really great job. I mean, he's paying them well, I guess. Not only does the man have more wars going, you know, he's supposed to be the anti-war president, which is why he won the Nobel to begin with. Uh, but this article written by Kit Daniels this morning, uh, 44 Afghan troops are taking advantage of U.S. military training programs here in the U.S. And they're using it um, as a means to illegally immigrate great to the U.S. Some of them are actually going AWOL. Uh, 2,200 Afghan troops to receive training here from our U.S. Department of Defense. These are not American citizens, mind you. And uh, we know that Comey takes to the Hill and then says, you know what? Our vetting process, this is how it works. Of course, we know that some militants, some terrorists are going to infiltrate. That's just the way that it works. We can't do anything about that. But, you know, if they commit, if they do something bad, then at least we have them in a database. You know, doesn't that make you feel safe? <laughs> it sounds exactly like they're refugees policy. Uh, you know what? We've got a couple of bad eggs in this 100,000. We, we're going to just admit that right now. But they actually haven't committed any acts of terror yet. So we really, you know, we can't do anything about that. Small price to pay because you know what? Yeah. I mean, you, you got to do what you got to do here. A couple of bad eggs, you know, can't get rid of the whole basket there. And too bad. Well, you know, speaking of that, <laughs> let's go back to this, uh, the VP debate earlier in the week where uh, Tim Kaine was really trying to come after um, Donald Trump saying, well, he's a you're fired candidate. And, and, and at the time, they probably thought that that was really good when they right. were there in their meetings with the buzzwords. But everyone's kind of at home watching going, we need a you're fired president. We need right. someone who's going to go in there and say you are fired. You're corrupt. Government waste fire half this PR staff. Donald Trump doesn't even have one. He does his own tweets and everything, which, <laughs> you know, that's kind of a lot of people disagree with what he has to say. But, you know, he doesn't have anyone, an army of PR working for him. But there's another story that I thought was huge and it got overshadowed by the VP debate. The Obama DOJ drops charges against an alleged broker of Libyan weapons. Uh, this was an arms dealer who had threatened to expose Hillary Clinton's talks about arming anti Qaddafi rebels. Of course, this was uh, how these weapons were getting shipped there into the hands of the rebels uh, via Libya. And we I mean, they dropped the, the case because it was going to look bad right before the election. <laughs> look, we know, we've covered this this week, that Clinton, if she wanted to, Gaddafi wanted free elections. You know, he was going to end his 42-year reign, his dictatorship. And she had such a personal, bitter vendetta against him. She would rather see Libya fall and thousands die, including four Americans, as opposed to working with him. Of course, we have to drop charges against the arms dealer. Yes, it mm -hmm. makes her look bad, but everybody knows that the State Department was acting as a gun runner and right. arming rebels that are, oh, by the way, now ISIS, right. which um, has created another, you know, total you know, rat hole of, 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 you know, a mess that somebody has to clean up. You know, I doubt that our own uh, president is going to handle that. We know that the only thing she cares about is going after Russia. You know, we never hear about her actually arming ISIS. But, oh, by the way, you know what? This broker, you might have a big mouth. So, yeah, let's just get him get, off. Get him off. It's going to look bad right mm -hmm. before the election. Of course, they've totally destroyed his business, his livelihood came after him for years, destroyed his life, but now all of a sudden that he threatened to come public with this damning information, they're like, okay, we give, we give. <laughs> who's, the one, who's the one supplying the guns? Well, speaking of trashing Trump, and we know that Kane, he did such a terrible job of that. His stupid one-liners, they were so cliche. You know, it was all about him looking weird, and Trump summed it up beautifully. It was like, he really looks wicked. You know, a lot of us watching it, we couldn't even put our finger on it. We're like, that guy looks a little weird. We're not Is really sure. Is he the Grinch? Is he Jack Nicholson's <laughs> Or is he from The Shining? Either There's way, he's a bad guy. Bizarrely <laughs> off with him. Um, libertarian VP candidate will focus his energy also on trashing Trump. We're talking about Gary Johnson, the same Gary Johnson that couldn't identify Aleppo. Uh, it was just well, and his vice presidential uh, running mate there has has basically just given up with all of his. Um, buffoonery that he's gone out and, and made a fool of himself. His VP is just saying, you know what? 
I'm out. I'm right. just going to focus all my attention on on Trump. They they both become <laughs> uh, shills for Hillary, if you will. That they you know, always what, were. What happened to their libertarian values is what I want to know. I don't um, think they ever have. You know, uh, clearly the man is he's he's aligning with where his true values always lied, which this my fr my my dear colleague Leanne already knew, uh, pointing that out on the air. Well, for more reports like this, be sure to check out our website at infowars.com. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Owen Schroyer, the final segment this week of the InfoWars Nightly News. And we are all excited for the presidential debate coming up on Sunday. Round two, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, St. Louis, Missouri, Washington University. And now I'm joined by Margaret Howell and Darren McBreen. Margaret, what are you expecting from this debate? Oh. I'm expecting Hillary to wake up just in time for it. Look, we know how she's prepping. She said she's going to be resting the next several days while Donald Trump, of course, is prepping. It's not really a debate, Owen. It's a town hall. You know, oh, kind of, it's town a, hall it's a town style. Hall, Make sure right? we add that caveat. It's Thank a town you. hall. We've got Martha Raddatz and Anderson Cooper in an ego war at the moment over whose uh, hair is bigger. So, you know, look, what I expect is for him to, you know, totally trump her like he normally does. And we'll get a spewage of lies, which will then... Make fun of. That's what I expect. Darren, your expectations. Teamwork. And that is going to be the moderators teaming up with Hillary Clinton against <laughs> Donald Trump. So yeah, I think he learned the hard way from Lester Holt that they're uh, gonna that they're you know, they're part of the establishment and he's anti establishment, so they're gonna work together to, to bring him down. Now, Donald Trump is very comfortable. He feels like he has the advantage because this is like he we're saying a, a town right. well, it's a town hall style debate. So he could receive questions from the audience. That makes him feel very confident. He's very good in front of a live audience. However, be ready for operatives in the audience and be ready for plants in the audience. We already saw this happen just a couple days ago when Hillary Clinton had a town hall style meeting and she took questions from a 15 year old girl that ended up being a, an operative because she's a child actress. I'm Brennan and I'm 15 years old. At my school, body image is a really big issue for girls my age. I see with my own eyes the damage Donald Trump does when he talks about women they look. As the first female president, how would you undo some of that damage and help girls understand that they are so much more than just what they look like? Oh, thank you. Thank you. So as soon as this exchange took place, the, the mainstream media immediately jumped on it. And this was nationwide on all the channels. They ran with this clip and they never bothered to make the connection that she is a, a child actress. Her father is a state senator and she's even appeared in campaign ads that features Bill Clinton. <laughs> Circumstances. He seems like a great guy, but everything he's talking about happened in the past, way before I was born. Now, I also want to point out that this isn't the first time that they pulled, uh, you know, stunts like this. We could expect it during the next debate as well. But remember, it was about this time last year at the beginning of the campaign when Jeb Bush had his own staffer planted in the audience. I think we're going to roll that one, too. So and she, wrong. there we go. Check it out. Me wrong, but I don't think that you're a friend to woman. How, what, it. Women. I knew I no, shouldn't no, have listen to her. what the media says. My mother <laughs> was one of the great people of the world, maybe the greatest ever. Did mom ever stare at you like this? So again, so she's mad dogging him, and that was played all over the, uh, right. the mainstream media very... as well. So we're going to see the same thing. I have a prediction. I think <clears> that there's going to be, oh, an illegal alien child in the audience. Okay, or a mom with some kids, and they're going to say, you know, Mr. Trump, what's going to happen to my mommy and daddy when you become president? Are you going to send them back to Mexico? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we know that Cain tried to distort uh, Donald Trump's position regarding uh, Mexicans in the country that don't have legal status. And she's, of course, going to do it again. But they're so flimsy and frail. We make fun of them. But the straw man arguments that they come up with, you think it's actually going to be an audience member this time with a gaggle of kids. Maybe that would sort of. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't the be narrative. surprised. There's there's going to be operatives in the audience. So Trump has to be ready for those type of questions. Mm -hmm. And not only do we see the operatives, what we also see is, as you pointed to, what they do is they use one clip 
and then they roll that on all of the affiliates, all of the CBS, yeah. the ABC, the NBC, and the, the Fox. websites. It'll be all over the Facebook. And, and that's Twitter what they get. That. And like you said, there is no deep research into this. This is the difference between Infowars.com and mainstream television news, folks. They take what they're spoon fed, regurgitate it to you without any investigation at all. We take things and then investigate and then do a report on it. That's how we're able to expose Hillary Clinton using child actresses to ask her questions at a town hall debate. So I guess another question would be, are they bold enough, and you think they are, to do something like this again, even in the face of being called out on it? Absolutely. I guarantee you it's going to happen. And, you know, uh, sometimes you hear it, we're, we're conspiracy theorists because we say that we believe that Hillary Clinton knows every question ahead of time in advance, and she's had plenty of time it's to prepare proven, for Darren, it. It's proven, Darren. We uncovered a memo where, you know, she doesn't go into an interview or anything without actually having the questions in front of her to be able to prep them because the lies are really hard to remember. You know, the truth, you never need to rehearse it. But Check this uh, out. 1980, the debate... Ronald Reagan versus Jimmy Carter, which was the most watched debate in television history until the last one between Trump and Hillary. During that debate, or I should say before that debate, a Reagan operative actually somehow got to uh, Jimmy Carter's everything, all his, his research, everything he was going to say beforehand, and they gave it to Ronald Reagan. So Ronald Reagan knew everything Jimmy Carter was going to say ahead of time. Uh, that is an advantage. And you, you tell me it's that... It's also the, criminal. That's terrible. Well, you know, you know, do what you got to do. I but now know. I think uh, that hey. we can't... Uh, the media is going to do the same thing for Hillary Clinton. They're on her side. Mm -hmm. Well, and we've mm -hmm. seen this. And, of course, uh, Anderson Cooper is a past member of the Clinton Global Initiative. And So it's not like there's, you know, CIA. collusion there. Mm -hmm. Margaret, do that you think... That explains it. <laughs> let me ask you this, though. Um, obviously, the media is going to be in the tank for Donald Trump. But... Do you think Hillary Clinton is going to be going on the attack, or do you think she's going to pull back considering it really hasn't helped her in the ratings? Uh, do I think Hillary Clinton is going to go on the attack? Uh, let me think about that. What do you think? Of course she's going to go on the attack. She's going to spew these well, lies. she does. The only thing, she's tried to spitball things against the wall for the past year. Let's call him a racist. Now he's anti-woman. He's anti-uterus. He's anti X, Y, and Z. <laughs> Whatever you have, is, if it's not male, he hates you. So well, she's going to try to make that stick. And that, that whole tired narrative, he's a racist. He's a bigot. He's anti-Muslim. I hate the way she says the word. It's very, very annoying to me. Of course she is. Yes, that's all she does. Owen. You know, I, I don't know. Again, it's interesting to me. Is the media that bold? Or, and is Hillary that bold that they're going to do the same tricks that they try every time, even though they've been caught red handed and they know we're going to call them out on it? They know InfoWars is going to be live on Sunday. They know we're going to be back she, on you Monday. You should have on a red bow, frankly, when you ask her. I mean, obviously, this is not an interactive town hall, but you should have on a red bow. You know, and that I think is uh, kind of the interesting thing I'd like to tie a bow on this <laughs> conversation. Since there are going to be people answering questions, I think this actually provides an element that might be uncontrollable for the Clinton and the media uh, operatives. We don't think all these people are going to be vetted before they're ever in the audience. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, that's the question. My, a better question for me is, is he going to hold back or is Trump going to be Trump? Like, it, we saw him in the first debate really, really put a muzzle on... On himself, and I really think that that hurt him. People were expecting him to come out swinging. Gloves are coming off. Gloves are coming off. So yep. that's what this we want to see. He's we want to see the attack the, mode. The gloves off, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, let's just hope he wears the red power tie and takes the gloves off and doesn't handle her. Doesn't go blue this time. Doesn't around? go blue. You don't go blue. No, you're presidential, and uh, not never concede. I, I was so disappointed. You know, the con the concession to her. You know, we, I just want to see Trump be Trump. Well, it's interesting because there is one more debate. And so perhaps after this one, perhaps after this one. So perhaps Trump is He's maybe saving some things for the last debate. But if you look at Mike Pence, the reason why he was so successful is because he wasn't aggressive and he didn't go on the attack. He wanted to stick to policy. Kane so was, maybe Trump tries to awesome. take that. Kane was like a petulant child. 72 times you interrupt someone. 72 he was times. I mean, he was like, was like, a, like a little kid who couldn't sit still. It was pretty. Uh, it was pretty unbelievable. But hey, you know what? Just like. The last presidential debate, there is so much hype sur uh, surrounding this presidential debate. And we're going to be live. And we're going to be live. That's right. Uh, you guys will be here. I'll be uh, in St. Louis, and Infowars.com slash show is going to have live coverage. It's going to kick off on Sunday at 4 o'clock with the regularly scheduled Alex Jones show. And then it's going to roll right on through past 6 o'clock 
through the debate. Even afterwards, we'll take your calls live in studio. So be mm -hmm. sure to tune in. Be sure to call. And if you like the work we're doing here at Infowars.com, please go to Infowarsstore.com. Check out our products. Check out the Bill Clinton rape shirt. Check out the Hillary for prison shirt. And check out all of our nutraceuticals. That does it for the nightly news tonight. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Sunday. <laughs>